For this problem, I'm asked to calculate the curl of the given vector field f, and then if f is conservative, to find a potential function for it. So let's recall how we calculate curl. It's actually the cross product of the gradient vector and f. So I'm going to calculate this using a 3x3 three three matrix. The top row is going to be i, j, and k. The second row is going to be the partial derivatives d, dx, d, dy, and d, d, z. And then the bottom row is just going to be the i, j, and k components of my vector field. Okay, and now I want to take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix using cofactor expansion. So first let's find the i component. So cut this column in this row and find the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm going to have d dy times negative y sine of z e to the z. subtract d d z times x cosine y plus cosine of z. And let's go and take these partial derivatives. So this should be plus, that's my fault. Um, the derivative of negative sine of negative y sine z with respect to y is going to be negative sine z. And then the derivative of e to z with respect to y is going to be 0, because that's treated like a constant. Now let's do the second part. So the derivative of x cosine y with respect to z is going to be 0. And then the derivative of cosine z with respect to z is going to be negative sine of z. So I actually get 0 for my i component. All right, let's go ahead and do j. So now I'm going to cut the middle column and the top row and take the determinant of this kind of weird 2 by 2 matrix. So the first thing I'm going to have is the product of the main diagonal. So d dx times negative y sine of z e to the z. And then I'm going to subtract the other diagonal, which is d dz of sine of y. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first component. So I have the partial derivative with respect to x of negative y sine z plus e to the z. And you will notice that none of these terms are actually a function of x. So this is all being treated like a constant. So that's going to be 0. And now let's do the second term. So I have the derivative of the sine of y with respect to z. Again, nothing here is a function of z. So this is just going to be 0, making my whole j component 0. And now I'm ready to do k. So cut this column, cut the top row, determine of this 2 by 2 matrix. So product of the main diagonal, d dx of x cosine y plus cosine z. And 
and then minus d dy sine of y. Okay, so let's go and do the first component. So the derivative with respect to x of x cosine y is going to be cosine y. And then cosine z is going to be treated like a constant, so that's derivative with respect to x is going to be 0. Now let's do d dy sine of y, which is going to be cosine y. So cosine y minus cosine y, my k component is actually 0. So the curl of my vector field is 0, and that means that it is conservative. So now I need to work on finding a potential function. Let me move over here to do that. First, let me rewrite my vector field. So I have sine of y, and then x cosine y plus cosine z. And then negative y sine of z plus e to the z. And if I'm saying this is a conservative vector field, that means that it's the gradient of some function. So this would be its partial derivative with respect to x, then the partial derivative with respect to y, and then with respect to z. So I can integrate each term with respect to that variable to get a potential function. So let me write out all three integrals. Okay, let me go ahead and start with the first one. The integral of sine of y with respect to x. Sine y is going to be treated like a constant, so when I integrate, I'm going to get x sine y plus c. Where c is just any real number. And now, let's do the second one. So now I'm integrating with respect to y. The integral of x cosine y is like the integral of cosine y, which is sine of y. So I've got x sine of y, and then cosine z is treated like a constant, so I've got y cosine z when I integrate. And again, plus some arbitrary real number k. Now let's do a third integral. So the integral of negative y sine z with respect to z is going to be y cosine of z. And the integral of e to the z dz is going to be e to the z. Plus another arbitrary real number, this time s. So if I look at these three integrals, I didn't get the exact same potential function for all of them, but I can see there are some similar parts. So x sine of y shows up here and here. And then y cosine of z shows up here and here. So let's look at what didn't show up in all three. I have e to the z, and it only showed up in the partial derivative with respect to z. But that would make sense, because if I was taking the partial derivative with respect to x or y, this would be treated like a constant and would drop out. So it's covered in my plus c and my plus k. So that needs to be a part of the partial of the potential function. And that covers everything. So let me write this out as one potential function. So I have x sine y plus y cosine z plus e to the z plus some constant real number c. So this whole thing is my potential function.